Trouble for Thomas and Other Stories. Trouble for Thomas. Thomas the tank engine wouldn't stop being a nuisance. Night after night he kept the other engines awake. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The other engines didn't take much notice, but Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some freight cars to take home tomorrow. If you take them instead of me, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That will be nice. Next morning, Edward and Thomas asked their drivers, and when they said yes, Thomas ran off happily to find freight cars. <laughs> Now the freight cars are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. And I'm sorry to say they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about freight cars. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The conductor blew his whistle, peep, peep, answered Thomas, and started off. But the freight cars weren't ready. Oh, 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 they screamed, wait, Thomas, wait. But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he hugged. All right, all right, don't fuss. All right, don't fuss, grumbled the cars. Faster and faster. Whee! He whistled as he rushed through Henry's tunnel. <laughs> hurry, hurry, called Thomas. He was feeling very proud of himself. But the cars were crosser and crosser. At last, Thomas slowed down as he came to Gordon's Hill. Steady now, steady, warned the driver as they reached the top. He began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the cars, bumping into each other. Go on, go on. Before the driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed. But the cars took no notice. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. There's the station. Oh dear, what shall I do? He cried. He rattled straight through and swerved into the good job. Thomas shut his eyes. I must stop. When he opened his eyes, he saw he had stopped just in front of the buffers. They're watching him, said Thomas. What are you doing here, Thomas? He asked. I've brought Edward's freight cars, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas. You've got a lot to learn about freight cars, Thomas. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. <laughs> Thomas saves the day. Every day, Sir Topham Hatt came to the station to catch his train. Hello, he always said to Thomas. Don't let the silly...
many freight cars tease you. Remember, you have an important job as a special helper in the train yard. There were lots of freight cars, and Thomas worked very hard pushing and pulling them into place. There was also a small coach and two strange things his driver called cranes. That's the breakdown train, he told Thomas. The cranes are for lifting heavy things, like engines, coaches, and freight cars. One day, Thomas was in the yard. Suddenly, he heard an engine whistling, Help! Help! A freight train came rushing through, much too fast. The engine was James, and he was frightened. His brake pots were on fire. They're pushing me, they're pushing me, he panted. On, on, laughed the freight cars, still whistling, Help! Help! Poor James disappeared. I'd like to teach those freight cars a lesson, said Thomas the tank engine. But soon came the alarm. James is off the line. The breakdown train, quickly. Thomas was coupled on and off they went. Thomas worked his hardest. Hurry, 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 he puffed. He wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those freight cars and their tricks. I hope poor James isn't hurt. James's driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Never mind, James, they said. It was those silly freight cars on your old wooden brakes that caused the accident. Thomas pushed the breakdown train alongside. Then he pulled away the unheard freight cars. Oh dear, oh dear, they groaned. Serves you right, serves you right, of Thomas. It's hard at work, puffing backwards and forwards all afternoon. This will teach you a lesson. This will teach you a lesson, he told the freight cars. And they answered, yes, it will, yes, it will. They put James back on the rails. to move but he couldn't so Thomas helped him back to the shed Thomas goes fishing. When Thomas puffed along his branch line, he always looked forward to something special. The sight of the river. As he rumbled over the bridge, he would see people fishing. Thomas often wanted to stay and watch, but his driver said no. What would Sir Thomas Hatt say if we were late? Every time he met another engine, he would say, I want to fish. 
But they all have the same answer. Engines don't go fishing. Silly stick in the muds, roared Thomas. One day he stopped as usual to take in water at the station by the river. Out of order? Bother, said Thomas. I'm thirsty. Never mind, said his driver. We'll get some water from the river. Found a bucket and some rope and went to the bridge. Then the driver let the bucket down to the water. The bucket was old and had five holes. So they had to fill it, pull it up, and empty it into Thomas's tank as quickly as they could, several times over. Terence the Tranter. Autumn had come to the island of Sodom. The fields were changing from yellow stubble to brown earth, and the tractor was hard at work as Thomas puffed along. Later, Thomas saw the tractor close by. Hello, said the tractor. I'm Terence. I am plowing. I'm Thomas, I'm pulling a train. What ugly wheels you've got. They're not ugly, they're caterpillars, said Terence. I can go anywhere, I don't need rails. I don't want to go anywhere, said Thomas. I like my rails, thank you. Winter came with dark clouds full of snow. I don't like it, said Thomas's driver. A heavy fall is coming. I hope it doesn't stop us. Huh, 
said Thomas, soft stuff, nothing to it. And he popped on feeling cold but confident. They finished their journey safely, but by now the country was covered. You'll need your snowplow for the next journey, Thomas, said his driver. <laughs> Snow is silly soft stuff, it won't stop me. The snowplow was heavy and uncomfortable and made Thomas cross. He shook it and he banged it, and when they got back, it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, he said to Thomas. Next morning, Thomas's driver and fireman came early and worked hard to mend the snowplow, but they couldn't make it fit. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it. I shan't have to wear it. He puffed to Annie and Clarabel. But they were rather worried. I hope it's all right. I hope it's all right, they whispered to each other. The driver was worried too. It's not bad here, he said to the fireman, but it's sure to be deep in the valley. Silly soft stuff, puffed Thomas. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday, and I shan't today. Snow can't stop me. He rushed into a tunnel thinking how clever he was, but there was trouble ahead. Cinders and ashes, said Thomas. I am stuck. And he was. Back, Thomas. Back, said his driver. Thomas tried, but his wheels spun and he couldn't move. The conductor went back for help, while everyone else tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods! I shall have to stop here until I'm frozen! What a silly engine I am! And Thomas began to cry. At last, a bus came to rescue the passengers. And then... Who should come to Thomas's rescue but Terence? Snow never worries him. He pulled the empty coaches away, then came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear, but still spun when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged, and at last dragged Thomas clear of the snow, ready for the journey home. Thomas, said his driver. I'll try, said Thomas, and he puffed slowly away. 